Now we have a couple of problems using complex numbers. So one thing you need to know that i squared is equal to negative 1. That's an important concept. So find the product. That means I just multiply. So I'm just going to FOIL it out. 7 times 4 is 28. 7 times 3i. 2i times 4. And 2i times 3i is positive 6i squared. And this is where you have to know that i squared is negative 1. These are like terms. So I'm going to keep the 28. I'm going to put those together. And then I have to know that that's 6 times negative 1, which is negative 6. So now those are like terms. So negative 6 and 28 is 22. Find the quotient. How do I find that quotient? Well, it's really rationalizing the denominator. So again, I have to multiply by something that gets rid of this i. So I'm going to multiply by what's called the complex conjugate. I believe if you go back and look at problem number 14, same type of thing where you have a binomial and i, remember, is defined to be the square root of negative 1. So that's really a square root we have to get rid of. Okay, so how do I do this? Well, I'm going to come down here so it's a, a little bit more room. Okay, On top, easy peasy, just distribute. On the bottom, that's 25. That's negative 49 i squared, and the middle terms are 0. This is negative 1. So this is really 25 plus 49. So just like up here, that became a negative 6, and that's how I got 22. Neg I squared is negative 1, so negative times that negative, that's where I'm getting that plus from. So I have 15 plus 2i over, I believe, that is 74. And it asks us to write our answer in a plus bi form. So I'm going to split that fraction up. I write my answer like this. On problem number 19, we're solving for x again. We have a square root. This is a radical equation. So you have to think about how am I going to get rid of that square root? Well, we're going to square both sides. So when you square a square root, those are inverse operations. They cancel each other out. But here you have to remember that you're really foiling out 2x minus 5, I'm sorry, x minus 5 times x minus 5. You don't have to write it out twice, but probably be safer to do that. So when you FOIL, and I'm kind of skipping a step there. Now we're going to go back all the way to problem 1. This is a quadratic. You've got to set it equal to 0. So I'm going to pull everything to the right hand side this way. My x squared stays positive. Again, back to problems 1, 2, and 3. Quadratic, set it equal to 0. I have to factor it. And let's see, I think minus 10 and minus 2 will work and give me that 12 and that 20. Setting both factors equal to 0. Am I done? No. You have to check your answers back up into the original problem. So we have to check. So let's check 10. So the square root of 2 times 10 plus 5, does that equal to 10 minus 5? Well, let's see. That's 20 plus 5. And that's 5. Yes, that's a good one. Let's check 2. 2 times 2 plus 5, does that equal to 2 minus 5? So let's, that's 4 plus 5 is the square root of 9 equal to negative square root of 3. No, because we have the principal root, which is positive. So again, this would be thrown out. This is an extraneous solution. You will lose a point on the final exam if you do not check those answers. OK, so for those of you who like the graphing part, let's see. You should know what that picture looks like. You should know it's not a line because we have x squared. 
we have to complete the table anyway, so we might as well do the work. So we have y equals negative 2 squared minus 4, I'm sorry, minus 5. Then this is 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. Then I'm going to plug in negative 1. Let's see, I'm going to plug in 0. one and two. Then I'm going to plot those points. And play connect the dots. Parabola, quadratic function. So here we're going to look at a picture and answer some questions. So does this represent a function? It's either yes or no. But you should remember about the vertical line test, and so this answer is yes. Now what is the domain? The domain means the x values, right? The x values. How wide does this graph go? So even though it goes down, it also gets wider. In fact, there's no place that x can't be a value. If x is 0, I get a dot. If it's negative 1, I get a dot. Negative 2, I get a dot. If I come way over here, eventually this is going to come down. I will have a value. So this would be all real numbers. The range, y values. So you want to go from the bottom to the top. How low does it go to negative infinity? but it stops up at here, right? One, two, three, four. You want to look at the y values, and we would use a bracket because it does include it. Now what about this? Well, we have f and we have g. So this one says use g, and I want to plug in negative five everywhere there is an x. So be careful, that's negative 5 quantity squared. So that's 25 plus 2, which is 27. So g of negative 5 equals 27. So that's part A. What about this part B? Well, it says use the f function, and everywhere there's an x, what am I going to put in there? a plus h. So f of a plus h equals 2 but in place of the x, I put in a plus h. And then I'm going to distribute and say, hey, I can't do anything else. That's the ugly answer. That would be part b. c, it says again, go back to the g function. And everywhere there is an x, okay, so right here there's an x, what am I going to put in place? An a not much to it. That's the answer. Now part D, this is a little different. What is it saying to do to F and G? It says to add F and G. So I have 2x plus 5, that's F, plus G. That's it. We're the only like terms. That. So I could write it like this. You can write it in any order you want. But the math teacher in me says let's write it in standard form. 